Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist. Just recently, uh, well of course this video when it comes out will be weeks after, but I just recently recorded a video for Chris Stapleton's version of the National Anthem, which I have said is possibly my favorite National Anthem of all time and the only other one although it's comparing apples to oranges, that compares for me is this Whitney Houston performance. So I figured I would go back, I haven't watched this in a long time, and actually do a vocal analysis of Whitney Houston's performance of the National Anthem. So that's what we're doing today, guys. And, and really, because it's an analysis, my goal for this channel, and it has been this way for a long time, is to, is to bring value to your listening experience. I want you guys to be able to appreciate this music more and, 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 and feel it more deeply in your core and be able to take the things that you learn from watching my videos and apply it to other things so you really gain a, a finer appreciation for these amazing artists that I break down and analyze. So piggybacking off that, uh, this will be a reaction of some kind, I haven't watched it in a while, and analysis video. So I will be pausing to talk primarily about the vocal technique uh, that Whitney is using in this performance and other artistic or musical choices, again, with the goal of helping to educate you guys and help you guys gain a further appreciation for this amazing singer. If you do find that I'm adding value to your listening experience, I would greatly appreciate you checking out my Patreon for as little as $1 a month to support me as a creator and performer and artist and all that good stuff. Guys, do please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and please do leave a comment for the algorithm. Super helpful these days. You can say, hi, Peter, or I love Whitney Houston, or this performance is amazing. It doesn't really matter. It's all good for the algorithm. And uh, so without further ado, let's break this down. I'm really excited. I haven't heard this in a long time. It is you know, so different from Chris Stapleton's version, so there are a million different things to talk about. Um, with Whitney's performance. So I'm excited to dive back into this and actually listen to it with an analytical ear for the first time. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in and uh, see where this journey takes us. And sung by Grammy Award winner, Whitney Houston. She just has such an amazing, pure, targeted voice. Um, I'm gonna snag my iPad so I can find some pitches here. I've got it right here. I'm gonna pull up this mini keyboard so we can figure out what notes she's actually singing during these passages. Oh, say. Okay, so we're in A flat major. I guess probably, probably, actually, I don't really know what the standard key is for the national anthem. People usually do it to, just kind of depending on what's comfortable for them. Um, so, just one thing to flag right off the bat uh, Whitney sings this national anthem basically come scritto. Uh, we use that in the, in the opera world, basically, how, exactly how it's written. You know, she doesn't do a whole lot of embellishment. She doesn't, as far as I remember, add a whole lot of riffing. She just sings it straight up and sings the shit out of it like so well um, which is one which is one reason why this version is among my favorites and has been you know was a favorite of mine for so long and again hard to compare her to chris they are my top two i'll say that because she just sings it straight up and she just sings it sings the hell out of it so uh let's break down what she's doing here So something that's so wonderful about Whitney's voice is she has, because it's such a, because it's such a natural instrument, like she just has it in her blood and her bones. What you get is a very natural vibrato in her sound, which a lot of people have to train for. I certainly had to train for years as an opera singer to get a really nice, consistent breath supported vibrato. And it's something that Whitney just has completely in spades. So basically whenever there's a sustained pitch, you know, more than if, if she sings a pitch for longer than you know, a split second, her voice is going to be spinning. Uh, that's another term we use in the opera world, spinning, just meaning a nice, consistent, natural vibrato. Um, 
it's it's just going to be it's it's going to go to that place naturally, which means that her her breath support system is in line. She's delivering the air properly, starting down from the diaphragm to the vocal folds, and she's just letting the vocal folds do their thing. She's not she's not uh, compressing it. She's not putting added tension on it. It's a very it's a very beautiful natural sound. And in addition to this, she also has very very good vocal fold closure, or a a relatively high closed quotient, especially when she gets up into her high chest voice belting range. Um, and a high closed quotient or good vocal fold closure means that during each oscillation of the vocal folds, I've been talking about this a lot lately because a lot of the singers I've been covering lately have really good vocal fold closure, so I will keep talking about it. During each oscillation, this is what the vocal folds look like when they oscillate, the higher percentage of time during each oscillation that the vocal folds are closed, the higher your closed quotient. And a closed quotient, high closed quotient, results in a very pure, efficient sound with a lot of high harmonic content. It's a sound that has a lot of cut, a lot of squealo in it. Um, this is something that in most genres you only see towards the top part of the, the high chest range. Um, like in Whitney, when she gets up into her, her really powerful belting, very high closed quotient, it is something that in the opera world we opt to go for throughout our entire range because as opera singers we have to be able to sing with an orchestra without any microphone. So it has to be a very powerful sound throughout the entire vocal range. In non-opera singing, usually you only hear it towards the top of the range. Whitney has very good closure throughout and she has a lot of control over it as well. So that's a lot just in this first phrase. So let's think about vibrato, her natural vibrato you know, singing exactly what's written, singing, you know, the, basically this melody in its simplest form. And uh, what was the last thing I just mentioned? And uh, vocal full closure. And just to highlight the vibrato. Oh, say can you see? So whenever she hits that low note and then hits the high note, you get a nice free spinning vibrato. Oh, say, can you see? Like the the oh, the so that's already up to a tenor high C. And this is, I mean, very comfortable for, for Whitney Houston belting up this high. For most trained female singers, uh, singing up to a tenor high C, a C5, is comfortable. For untrained female singers, not so much. That's when you start getting into, it starts getting pretty yelly, if, if you can even maintain chest connection up that high. But for Whitney, very easy. Obviously, she is you know one of the great voices of all time. So that, that range is no problem for her. So that's just like, just beautiful, like big open mouth, big smile belt. So again, that's that high C, you know, and this time she didn't opt for vibrato. She kept it a very pure straight tone sound. And as far as, you know, embellishments or riffing, just a, just a tiny bit of embellishment on the way down. Like, let's see exactly what she does. <laughs> Proudly, proudly we hailed. So just a little bit as instead of proudly we hailed, just a little bit of uh, just a couple added notes there. So so nothing crazy really. So so there there's a good example of when the vocal fold closure decreases a lot. Gleaming. When she gets down to that A flat three, it's there's it's a much less pure, much less efficient sound, all based on vocal fold closure than when she's up higher in her range. And like I said, this is this is totally expected and uh, normal for anything outside of the opera world. Is to as you ascend in the range, if you have the vocal fold coordination, your your closed quotient will increase the sound will get more efficient and pure. And as you decrease and get to the bottom, it gets a little more of that breathiness in the sound. So listen to the timbre, AKA the vocal, uh, 
the voice color on twilights, the word twilights versus the vocal color, the timbre on the word gleaming. It's, a, it's just a great highlight of the contrast between uh, you know, a higher closed quotient and a lower closed quotient. So there, so, okay, so this is essentially the second verse of the song, and you can tell she is in, in, intentionally putting a totally different vocal color in her sound compared to the first verse. First verse, she comes out, she's like, here's my voice, I'm Whitney Houston, does her thing. Second verse, she, she puts a lot more nuance in it. She pulls back off the voice a lot, and we get a lot more of that breathy, lower closed quotient sound, even in the middle part of her range, as opposed to just the bottom part. What I love is even when she's singing really breathy and soft, she still mains that nice, consistent vibrato. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale. So it's it's even when she's pulling off the voice, she still has a nice support system and she still has a nice delivery and kind of very natural, stress-free approach to the singing. Um, Really nice to hear. So, so she can do that. She can keep that natural, free vibrato, whether she's you know power belting up way higher range or if she's got a very relaxed approach to it. So there's a lot of versatility there. You can tell that you know she can do a lot with her voice. She has a lot of control over it, and she can kind of pick and choose when to be powerful, when to be soft, when to use vibrato, when to not, when to accentuate certain words in a certain way. She's got all of those things in her toolkit as a singer which of course adds to this wonderful performance of the anthem. Mm. Okay, okay, so there was a, so a couple things to flag here. First, she flips up into a head voice falsetto for ramparts. Oh, the ramparts. Instead of, like she did in the first verse, going up to that high C and a fully connected chest voice for, for a big belt there. Totally, totally different approach to the sound. And a, a nice little tasteful rip. So there, there's a little embellishment for you that's more than we've seen so far in her rendition. I don't know exactly the note she sings, but a, a nice little embellishment there. It's, it doesn't seem overindulgent or anything like that, or self-indulgent for that matter. I think it just, just adds her own little flair to this, to this piece. So before we go crazy, so again, you know, I think she probably does it to present a bigger contrast between that second verse and where she's about to go in, where she's about to go into Whitney Houston land with this, some like gorgeous high power belting, you know, which is, you know, a big reason why we all have come to know and love her voice so much. So I think it's a brilliant approach from a performance standpoint to have that second verse be, you know, much more dialed back and breathy because because now she can go into Whitney land and like you can see my smile. I'm like, I'm here. I'm ready for it. Let's go, Whitney. It doesn't hurt that she's got a, such a charming smile and presence and that she just, she's enjoying it. Like she just, she was born to sing. She loves it. So that's a high E flat five belt in full chest voice. So that is getting up 
into the really high belt range, even for well-trained singers. Um, that is a long way. So what's happening when you're staying connected in pure chest voice is your vocal folds, the whole mass of them, there's just two of them, and the whole mass of them stretches, stretches, stretches to sing higher pitches. And that's the thyroretinoid part of the vocal fold, which is 75 to 90%. That's the muscle mass of the vocal fold. And then you have a mucosal membrane on the edge of each vocal fold. And so when you're connected in pure chest voice, the, all the mass is stretching out. That's why it's, it's such a weighty sound. And it's actually mechanistically very much like yelling. It's like a healthy breath supported yell. That's why it sounds, that's why it gets us jacked up when we hear big high belting, because it's so like viscerally like human, just like, ah, right? And then when you flip it a head voice, the, the mass, the muscle mass, for the most part releases, and then it's just the mucosal membrane that stretches, and it can stretch much further. That's why you can sing much higher in a higher head voice, as opposed to a, a thick chest voice. Kind of just sounded like a Mickey Mouse there. Mickey Mouse, great head voice. <laughs> so that's like mostly, so, so what she's doing here, she's singing up to this high E flat five, stretching the whole mass of those vocal folds out, and that's why it's such a powerful, visceral, sound and of course Whitney maintains this you know supported like beautiful pure tone all the way up there you know she's it's really exciting but at the same time we're not nervous that she can't get there because she's she's such a skilled singer So she just did a flip there, and I also want to flag another, <clears throat> I want to flag some of these vowel modifications. So sometimes when you go up really high and you're, actually not sometimes, always, when you go up really high and you're fully connected chest voice to the belt land, it helps to get the widest vowel possible. Um, that is literally based on the physics of how the sound waves propagate from your vocal folds throughout your vocal tract and out into the world. If you have a big, ah, Big mouth is great for high belting. So that's why whenever you don't see anyone belting really high on an ooh or a pure E. Like if someone sings an E, it's like eh. It's like it's like it's big mouth singing. Um, so just notice the vowels that she modulates a little bit. And I'll 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 go ahead and flag some of them so you so you guys know what I'm talking about. So fortunately, the way this is written, rockets, red glare, are all you can all opt for a very open position. So that's that's an easy line for it. Bursting. Bursting. If we say it normally, bursting. It's a small position. She goes bursting in a, to keep it much more in line with that big open mouth position. Like the same position. Ga gave instead of gave gave closed e gave. It's more like an ah gave proof. And then she flips for proof, which is probably um, gave proof. So that's interesting. She flips, but she goes down. Gay through. So I'm guessing that I'm guessing that high C is probably pretty uncomfortable for her. And if she did like a pure ooh, that C is probably relatively uncomfortable. So could be artistic, could be functionality, I'm not sure. But either way, she goes from a higher note to a lower note and actually flips up into head voice, which is I think is a just a signal of how difficult that pure ooh proof vowel position is on a pitch that high in chest voice. And then down to the B flat goes back into a pure chest voice. So I'm guessing, and 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 sings it pretty pure too. Ooh, the pure ooh. Proof through, proof through, proof through. So same vowel. She goes from gave chest 
proof on the C in head voice, through, back to chest voice remains on the OO. So that's a, that's just like a lot happening in, the, in that one second. I like that that change it still there just like again that's a, a great way of just adding just a little bit of your own nuance you're a little bit of your own flair a slight change in melody a slight change in rhythm and the delivery of the actual poetry of the piece it's a great way to just make it make a, a rendition your own without going overboard That's a great riff. Wait. That's just a, gr a great little embellishment right to the end of a phrase, like kind of as the air is running out, doing a little riff, and then it goes off into nothing. I just want to flag the breathing here. So this tempo is a relatively slow tempo. Said does that star. So he takes a breath there. Spangled breath. Banner yet wave. So there's two breaths in the middle of this phrase that if you look at it grammatically, it would just be, you would just say it in one breath. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave, right? Say does that star spangled banner, uh, banner yet wave, right? So just interesting to, to see where an artist chooses to breathe because you got to breathe for a big long sustained phrase and it's going to interrupt the actual grammar you know the prosody of the language so to speak so you know to keep the thought connected while still keeping your keeping uh keeping the thought connected while splitting up with breaths is a skill it's something we 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 actually work on a lot as opera singers figuring out where to breathe without interrupting the line the actual flow of the singing I'm also guessing if, you know, she's in this performance setting, I'm sure her adrenaline system is jacked up. I mean, singing the singing the anthem of the Super Bowl is like, that's absolutely insane. It's a, another reason why it's, it was amazing to hear Chris Stapleton do like his, like he had some big rocky gritty belts in there because it's Chris Stapleton, but it was also like a very laid back, like a totally, just totally, like I said, apples to oranges, two different versions. I can't imagine like being that calm in this kind of performance setting. Um, I'm guessing what I was saying, if she was in a vacuum or in a practice room, she could probably sing that whole phrase in one breath, but given the circumstances, opting to take a couple breaths to you know make sure she's got the air. And let's back up just a few seconds so we can transition into this final phrase. It's so good. It's so good. So she, she flagging that vowel modification and such. She hits the free, uh, the end of the free, the free. That's the E flat there. Now, if it was on a different vowel, as we saw earlier, she could have kept it in pure chest voice, but she actually went to a mix, a more of a mixed voice on that E flat. Which allowed her, without having to switch registers to do that cadenza up to the high A flat. Whereas if she went up to the E flat six, E flat five in pure chest voice, it would have been a pretty obvious switch of registers to then go up to that A flat. So she opts to switch before that E flat to make that transition 
more seamless. That, that transition, if she switches later, it becomes more glaring. Instead, she switches before, adds for just a more seamless track up to that A-flat, five. Home. It would be home and the home and the hum. You gotta, you gotta opt for a big, big mouth there for that high C. Like one more thing, and this is um, her glottal attack on and the home of the that uh, 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 really helps the vocal folds come together, especially when starting on like a a higher pitch like that. So instead of like uh, 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 and so it just kind of ensures that she can come right in on that pitch because I mean coming out of nowhere that's starting pretty high uh, in her range. Of that uh, C sharp five of the instead of 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 the of the of the it's a much more aggressive attack and it helps the vocal folds come together when you're starting that high in chest voice and that's the last thing I'll say and I'm gonna let this play out and that'll be the end of it Truly one of the golden voices of all time. You all should watch her documentary. It is both amazing and truly heartbreaking. Um, but she was an amazing, amazing, amazing singer. Amazing voice. Um, and one of the best national anthems ever, for sure. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you found that you, you learned something new, at least subscribe to the channel because you'll learn something new in probably every video I make. There's always a million different things to talk about as far as technique and artistry. I do repeat a number of things because there are you know, a lot of similarities between the greatest singers. But um, there's always something new artistically to comment on, musically to comment on. There's always something different someone does vocally than someone else. So definitely subscribe. And if, if I added a lot of value to your experience, if you can now appreciate Whitney's singing more, if you can appreciate this performance more, do please consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Uh, if you sign up for the year, $10.80 for the year, uh, which is just dirt, dirt cheap. Um, and you can, and there are tiers all the way up to $100 a month where of course you get a bunch of crazy benefits, but there's six tiers, I think one, $1, $5, $10, $25, $50, and 100 with all varying levels of, of you know, access and stuff like that. But for $1 a month, you get, you get early access to all my videos, you get access to my private Discord server, you get, you know, life updates from me, you will get to interact with me one-on-one, -on -one, at least in Patreon messaging, and I'm also very active on my Discord server. So if you guys want to support me, if you want to help me keep doing this, which I love doing, please do consider joining my Patreon. Other than that, please do like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit the bell, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you for the next reaction and analysis. Peace.